Don't touch anything here. Get back to work. Straw dolls. Eerie, but effective for a scene recreation. Oh, I want one of these. Or two. What am I not seeing here? Oh, there we go. Oil cloth. Won't fade and waterproof. Enough here to make ten sails and more. Okay, let's see what else we can find. There's a map. This reminds me of my father's room. A plan for this whole operation. This might prove useful. I'll note it down. Okay, that might be useful. What else can we find? Not while he can see me. Looks like we got everything here. Let's go further down. That looks deep. I wonder what would happen if it fell. Oh, a 
skull. Can't pick it up. Sharpest pickaxe. <laughs> A guilty pleasure of the real archaeologist. Missing your Laura, Mr. Swift? Who knew archaeology could be so exciting? Exciting is certainly a word. More skulls. Is there anything here? I'm assuming all these guys won't have much information for me. So Swift not... lost his temper when he learned what happened to the statue. Oh, we can eavesdrop, so they might be useful. Let's give this a try. Swift lost his temper when he learned what... Closest the beach. Tilted pedestal, lion helmet. Wait, I got I got those right. Let's try this again. Swift lost his temper when he learned what happened. Closest the beach. Tilted pedestal. Lion helmet. Kicked statue. So which one was the one with the lion helmet? Okay, let's keep going. So they did find a statue, but they broke it. Let's see what we can find on the beach. There's John. Okay, so there's nothing on the beach. And John's gone now, too. Great. Oh, he's back. Alright, let's go up here and see what's up here. Somehow the text remains legible. Let's see if I remember my Latin. So Vitus is the one who's asleep. And he's guarded by his brother. I'm sure all these clues are somehow going to be needed. And I hope I can put them all together when they are. Okay, so this one is the broken statue. A sickle for harvesting. The ancient Romans honored the seasons. A goddess? A mother? Someone's wife? There were four statues here originally. I wonder what the three other statues look like. I see now. Mr. Swift didn't realize the significance of the statues. Okay, so we're gonna have to recreate the statues, I think. So let's look in the evidence and see if I can remember exactly what we've learned about them. All right, let's give this a try. So we have four statues. One looking east, one looking west. So the one looking east 
had a sickle in her hand. So east is that way. So it would be this one. The one looking west had a basket of fruits. So west is gonna be this way, right? Yes, it is. And we got a basket of fruits. Okay, so no. So this one's gonna be looking east. So then this one has to be holding a basket of fruits looking west. Like that. And between them were their sons. Vetus and Titus, I think. And Vetus had a big shield. And Titus had a lion's head. Okay, but which way are they supposed to be? Titus, and this is Vetus. The big shield. I thought he was supposed to be sleeping. Right, I'm gonna try to validate this. I think this should be correct. I think the women are definitely correct. I'm not sure about Vetus and Titus. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. But I am. Okay, so they could be facing both ways too. Seems everything's in place. Now, let's see what this has to tell us. Okay, that was a total guess, guys. I just tried everybody facing the same way in a circle, and it worked. Uh, I'm surprised it did, but I'm happy it did. So, where are we going now? Discovery, Mr. Swift. And hey, look at this. What have you found? Don't let anyone touch anything there. Eureka! I found you, my friend. Well, that took a little bit of searching. That wasn't very obvious. this stuff now. And 
there's darts with two missing. A box of darts. Handy against rodents of all kinds. So those darts may have been used to piss off the elephant. Okay, so he's got books about elephants and the best time where they get angry and aggressive. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Excuse me. Trying to take over my research, are you? I come here to pick up my diary and I find you snooping around. Explain yourself. Mr. Swift, if that were true, I would have been on my way to the newspaper. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself properly. Outrageous! You deceived me, sir! What is the reason for your being here? Who sent you, Mr. Holmes? Theodore Gildon's premature death brought me here. Theodore? Is dead? How can that be possible? I'm thinking of all the possibilities, and I'm not crossing out anyone who might have been involved. Even his elephant. The land you're excavating belongs to Mr. Gildon, does it not? Did I hear an accusation? I have nothing to hide. You can ask me whatever nonsense you've prepared as a token of my diminishing respect towards you. Very well, Mr. Swift. I appreciate your cooperation. Were you at the site this morning? Affirmative. This project is taking a lot of my time, as you see. I spend more time underground than on the surface. When did you learn about Theodore's death? Just now. You just told me. And you aren't surprised? Shocked? I won't tell anyone if you shed a tear or two. Weren't you partners, after all? We were. And it is a real shame. But I've seen too many deaths in my life, Mr. Holmes, for the news to truly shake me. When was the last time you saw Mr. Gildon? A couple of days ago. We discussed the site. I believe in the tomb and its secrets. Theodore's patience was stretched, however. He was already inventing new projects. It wasn't a long conversation. I suppose that his daughter will inherit everything now along with all of the eccentricities and problems. And not forgetting Goliath. Eccentricities and problems, Mr. Holmes. One of many. Will you allow me to return to my research? Or are you insisting on remaining an obstacle? Oh, I haven't even started yet. You have a weakness for nostalgia. Or rather, do you use it to record a list of enemies? Young man, you need to check your moral compass. Reading another person's diary is a sin in every culture that I can think of. But you aren't answering the question. You've already read it. Why bother? I simply record my life to keep my memory clean from misinterpretation. Letters and pages don't lie. But the writer of the text can. What's with this box of darts? Is it for a scientific argument? A little darker than that. Rather for killing the kind of rodents that might nibble a nose or a toe in your sleep. Let's just say I have to protect myself against a larger animal, such as an elephant. Might it be enough to stop it, make it faint? If I were you, I wouldn't bank on it. I've nothing to add. With this book, you were tempted to plan an attack on the elephant? Your insinuations are out of place. Goliath is a frightening animal. All I wished to do was to understand the creature. As any scientist would do, I researched, analyzed, and drew conclusions. Hmm. And what conclusion did you draw? That Theodore Gildon made the animal miserable. He couldn't provide the proper environment for the beast. My interest in the subject ended there. Moving on. As far as I can tell, you're a man of the academic world, so this book about Nabe and Laura is just an empirical study? What? That nonsense? I'd prefer to lose my eyesight than read such trash. 
So, you know nothing about it? I know nothing. I wish I'd never heard of it in the first place. This caricature of science. Do I hear traces of envy? You're still relatively young that you might find your own, Laura. Perhaps I envy, Nabe, for I cannot simply blow people up for distracting me. That's all. You happy now? Wonderful. I'm a busy man. What's with this intricate recruitment process? Pro-British workers charge less? As a head of this organization, I need to secure a productive environment. It's impossible to do so if there are political differences. Especially here, where the native population doesn't support our efforts to find the ancient artifacts. Decent pay can also stimulate productivity and shut down any political discord. Hadn't you thought of that? You're young. You have time to fritter and fight with everyone you meet. I don't have such a luxury. Our workers receive enough pay for what they do. So don't start a discussion you know nothing about. I'm a busy man. Did this plan cause a rift in your business relationship with Theodore Gildon? Nothing like that. Admittedly, we didn't share a common vision of what is more important, the past or the future. In my opinion, we can't build a future without knowing the past. So you wanted to save the tomb of Vitus here, or perhaps your control over the research? Only the knowledge that rightly belongs to humankind, nothing less and nothing more. I've nothing to add. I've nothing to add. Moving on. Gildan's Elephant is quite an unusual addition to Cordona's fauna. What is your scientific opinion on that? No matter how much Theodore loved it, it still remained a wild animal trapped inside a stone pen. Goliath needs savannas, fields, lakes. I'm sure that Goliath did not have a plan to kill his owner to head to the savannas. What do you think? No, animals don't kill in a typical sense. I can only presume that it tried to protect itself from captivity, from Theodore. It was a gilded cage that was predestined to break. Have you seen this person before? The one beside Imogen Gildan? No, but he's with Imogen, so I suppose that he's a friend of hers. That girl always has her head in the clouds. I could have said Theodore was different, but that wouldn't have been entirely true. Away with the fairies, was he? That's one way of putting it. Either way, I don't know much about Imogen's life or her friends. The type of elite that pretends to be educated. Remember one of the rules? It uh, seems that you didn't return a tool. Is this knife yours? Do I look like a fellow who carries a knife? I don't need it. There are plenty of uses for it on the site, and outside of it. I have other people to cut ropes for me, Mr. Holmes. Okay, so he's had a lot of reasons to kill Theodore, but I'm sure there's more to this story. And we're gonna go try to find Imogen's boyfriend now. Who is at the Yacht Club? Alright, let's find the Yacht Club. a very specific boat with a name what is the boat's name whirlpool let's pin this because we'll be asking about him so is this whirlpool no but let's ask can you satisfy my curiosity how dare you address me Oh, I need to change. That was very, very rude. That was incredibly rude. Alright, let's go back. 
So I remember it didn't let me change before on the street. It said I had to be in a special kiosk, I guess. But now it doesn't mind. Okay, let's see if he'll talk to me now. So I guess the way we dress in this game is very important. Which could be a difficult thing to figure out sometimes. How to get dressed. I still can't believe he said, how dare you talk to me. What a bastard. Can you satisfy my curiosity? That's a question I can answer. So he might be in his room here. But see, I just changed and this bastard told me everything I needed to know. Oh man, I don't like you. Judging people by their clothes. Okay, there's gonna be lots of stuff here, I have a feeling. Nothing. There's something here in the window. Bloodied bandages. Has someone been hurt? Storage. We can go to the storage. A foghorn to navigate and warn others at sea. You should have a warning to cover your ears. A foghorn. Sails of hatred. I suppose there is something for everyone, including champions. Hey, a word about the trilogy. Right then, you literary expert, you, what was so important about these books? Or did you simply need some kindling? It's inspirational. I have a plan. Are you listening? I wish I wasn't, but I am. So, we catch a monkey, a langa, for example, then we extract some blood from it. What? Why? It will make us forever young, Sherry. Page 127 of the second book. Oh, I am so done with this. No, wait. Then how about we make a wax statue? I've stopped listening, John. So we completed John's challenge and he has some really crazy ideas with those books. I don't know if it was worth it. Okay, so it doesn't look like, like there's anything else here. Okay, there's something here. Whirlpool. The champion's whirlpool. Pools bread and butter. Where would a champion hide a key? Yeah, where would a champion hide his key? Okay, there's this paint on the floor. It's leading right over here. There's not much I can do about it. Okay, not much I can do. So where would a champion on his key? I'm guessing it would be in a trophy somewhere. The championships. Oh, the champions. Whirlpool. Wait. 
All the other ones say something and this one's empty. That's weird. Okay, so I have to pin something else. Okay, so now we have this. I bet there's a key behind it. I hope Paul is more skilled at yachting than he is at hiding keys. And there is a key behind it. How did I guess? Okay, let's search his room. There's these bandages. bandages. We saw them already. What else do we have? To earn big, you have to spend big. So he's building a bigger boat, maybe? Old betting slips. Paul always bets on Whirlpool. One victory after another. Mr. Gildon wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Yeah, so Mr. Gildon didn't like him too much. Okay, what else do we have? Additional earnings to sweeten the victory. An interesting place for a message to a champion. Suspicious note. Do we know what's in the note? Okay, fresh leaves for the party. What kind of leaves? An expensive set of tools for woodwork. An amateur wouldn't know how to use these. So he's an expert craftsman. And more darts and also two a missing. Box full of darts. Each has a needle and can be loaded with drugs. Shipbuilding, shipwrights tricks, sail weaving. So we have everything, right? Okay. What else? There's tools here. Something in the storage about him. A foghorn to navigate and warn others at sea. Oh, there is something. <sighs> Undeniably, psychotropes. Not for toothache, I think. A typical tea tin. I wonder what he has for biscuits. So some sort of drugs, I guess? Maybe they were used to drug the elephant. He has a dart as well. Maybe he killed him. Now we have Arthur Swift and this guy, Paul. Oi. Hands off my possessions before you lose your fingers. Are you illiterate? The rules are written everywhere. Ah, oh, Mr. Perks, the cabin boy himself. Champion, you mean. I was right. You are illiterate. I think a couple of shiners might teach you. One last chance. Who are you? 
Mr. Gildan's friend or Immigrant's friend? I'm Sherlock Holmes, a friend of our mutual acquaintance, Miss Imogen. Look, you artichoke. Imogen has no friends. Except for me. If you must try to insult people, it's better to know the meanings of the words that you're using. You fancy you could teach a sailor to swear? Go ahead. Show me how inventive you are. Stand still for a moment. Okay, let's observe. Oh, he wants to fight. He's a female. So Paul is actually a female. I wonder why she's hiding. Okay, what else do we need to find? Elbow. So I think she's a professional smuggler, not the yacht woman. That would make sense. She has a note from the smugglers or from drug dealers or whoever it was that she can't back out of the deal. Yeah, I would say she's a smuggler. If you guys think she's a professional yachtswoman, let me know why in the comments. I think she's a smuggler. I'm going to accept this. So a woman wishes to become a real criminal and smuggling is a stepping stone towards that? Is there not enough prestige in yachting? Or is it easier to compete with other fools like yourself? Everyone has a starting pistol. Just shoot and run. Don't say a word. I don't know where you're getting half of this nonsense, but you're on some thin ice here that I'm willing to crack. Damn you, Paul. I'm sick of... Who's this peacock? Does he know who I am? I definitely know who you are not. You're not a dictionary reader, at least. I wanted to see how you pals interact with each other in oh, your crap. natural habitat. But I'm afraid I have to interfere. Let's kick butt. I'm coming for you. No more crime. I'm coming for you. All right, we got two. Don't we got one more. Moving. You've lost. Snuff's ready. All right, let's use the snuff on him. No more crime for you until next month. Okay, that was harder than I expected. Oh, so there's more of them. I killed one guy. Dodge Darn it. This. We can overcome. Uh, 
take a rest, my friend. Give him. Go, go, go. The snuff's ready. Not that easy. I'm coming. I'm coming for you. <laughs> Too simple. <laughs> Overcome him. Th I couldn't miss the party. Darn it. I'm coming for you. How many of you are is there gonna I be? Will end you. There's too many of them. He's gonna kill me. Nope. I'll He's got something on the back. Give him the pepper snuff. <laughs> Darn it. Wrong way. I couldn't miss the party. Take a rest, my friend. Are we done? Holy crapola. And there's no reward for risking our lives. Paul's explanation will suffice. Okay, I killed one of them. Damn, that was tough. Your fellow mariners have a strange way of showing hospitality. They were not my friends. Are you sure? I would rather risk my neck for someone who's at least honest and thankful. Perhaps then don't enter someone's life and be so judgmental, pretending you're better than they are. Then give me your perspective and allow me to see through your eyes. I tried to tell you before, but your partners interrupted. Have you heard the news? Theodore Gilden is dead. Do you have anything to say? Well, what a shock. To me, he was an angry old ogre. Good riddance. Was it Goliath that killed him? Did it crush him? Break his bones? Come on, tell me. I want all the details. You have an unusual way of showing grief. Imogen wouldn't appreciate that. But yes, the animal could have been involved. It's poetic in a way, isn't it? It takes a beast to kill a monster. I wish I could have been that elephant. What were you doing this morning, Miss Perks? Don't call me that. I'm a champion. I was sailing. The other club members told me that you missed the race this morning. Do champions not need to practice? Oh, you've talked with them already. No, I wasn't racing. I visited the doctor after that attack on me. And then I had to honor the deal with the bandits you just took care of. So he seems to be telling us the truth. You're asking for trouble with this smuggling business. You better leave it before they smuggle you out in a barrel. Don't patronize me. I've only ever had trouble with law-abiding citizens like Gilden and you. Never bandits. So ask me anything you want, and then get out of my sight. He seems to be telling us the truth. Maybe it was Arthur Swift after all. I don't know what this means. I'm clueless. You smuggle illicit psychotropes on your yacht. Not a delivery for the hospital, I'm sure. Of course not. I've had to cut corners to earn some money. 
How might a person afford to pay for a yacht in an honest way? I don't know, although I'm smart. The buyers are my customers. Adults who are willing to pay for their pleasure, or weapons for jewels. Whatever they want me to deliver. Nothing criminal. Well, it's your lucky day. I'm not here because of smuggling. Have you tasted this tea yourself? I wouldn't have been a champion if I had used it. It's just a side business that keeps my career afloat. It's quite expensive to compete in yachting. Sometimes I cut corners. Such as fixing Whirlpool yourself? Exactly. And sometimes I just have to pay. That's how I earn money. I don't sell slaves or take the last mangir from a poor family. Look what I found. A box full of darts. Hey, that's mine. I confiscated it. These darts appear to be filled with something. Poison? How powerful is it? It's strychnine. Enough to instantly kill a small rodent. I haven't tried it on a human. Yet. I hope you know what you're doing. Could it immobilize a larger animal, say, an elephant? I've never tried, but I have wondered. So he's telling us the truth that he thought about killing him. But did he actually do it? It seems as though Theodore Gilden hung a sword of Damocles over your life and career. Were these only words or something more serious? Pfft. Check my forearm. Pulled muscles and bruises. Small cuts. Nothing that you could call serious. I doubt that a man in his late fifties could wrestle you. It wasn't him. He behaved like a rat and hired brutes. His boys tried to lock my hands behind my back, but I was faster and I escaped. Was he so protective of his daughter, or was it your feminine secret that provoked him? My guess is that he was protecting his property. As he saw it, he owned Imogen, and he treated her like a piece of furniture. He didn't want his daughter to be loved by anyone. What's more painful is that Theodore didn't allow me to love his daughter. Typical. I'm not sure that your relationship with Imogen could be described as typical. Are you afraid of a woman in trousers? Now that's typical of men. Between yachts, darts, and notes from bandits, I've discovered many fascinating facts about you. But this, an installment of Nabe and Laura's adventures, why did you sully your library with this? It's a gift from Imogen. I didn't buy it. I might have turned a couple of pages, but nothing more. I swear. I will give you the benefit of the doubt, but your literary taste has put you on my blacklist. A charming picture. I've heard that champions do often pose with their trophies. Cheeky. It is a lovely trophy, though. I'm sure you will agree. What is it that you like most about her? Her naivety? Her father's money? A somewhat difficult choice. Especially now that her father is out of the equation. Does this knife seem familiar? I didn't find it in your competitor's back, to be clear. This knife is as blunt as your humor. It's a boson's knife, but it's not mine. I wouldn't be so careless as to mislay my tools. What can you tell me about the elephant? He's smarter than some people here, including his owner. Although I feel he could be dangerous, no matter how much he's fed. Why is that? Have you ever seen Goliath attack anyone? Well, not exactly. But I saw it, uh, abusing some poor tree during one of its walks with Theodore. The expression on that old ninny's face was priceless. But it wasn't funny to look at. Believe me. It was frightening. A. Swift. Are you familiar with this name? The gentleman had business with Mr. Gildon. Likely just another strange and wrinkled fellow like old Gildan was. Perhaps this swift person has a rhino, and they wanted to see which pet was stronger. In other words, I don't know who he is, but I bet he's crazy like Theodore. I doubt that court owner has ever boasted a battle arena for that size of mammal. You have an interesting imagination. I don't know what you're suggesting. I don't know what you're suggesting. Okay, I think that's enough with him, but let's just go through everything and make sure. I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. I don't know what you're suggesting. I don't know what you're suggesting. 
Imogen doesn't strike me as an industrious young lady, so I find it strange that she was busy packing up all her belongings when Mr. Gildon died. That's some um, favorable wind in your sails, isn't it? Is it so suspicious that a couple might embark on a trip? I wanted to thank her, so we planned to go traveling. A Theodore-free place, without elephants. The timing of it is suspicious, however. Your lady friend becomes an orphan and heir, and there's a planned trip directly afterwards. An improvised romantic dinner will never please a spoiled girl. A planned voyage might. It's not spur of the moment. Okay, we have something new in the mind place. Oh, we have lots of new stuff. Everyone blames Goliath. Well, we know Goliath killed him. Well, the other attacked Paul, and Paul has a fresh bruise. So we need to lure him out by exploring his lust. I wonder how we're gonna do that. We can fatal battering. They both have darts. I don't think any of these go together. Okay, I'm just gonna try to go through all of them and eliminate everything. I don't see any that, that would go together here. Oh no, damage to the shed. That could go with the bruised ones. That could go for both of them. Arthur Swift may have been at the scene when Theodore Gildan died. His injury matched the damage done to the shed. Paul Perks may have been at the crime scene when Theodore Gildan died and fallen on the shed. I actually, I'm leaning towards Arthur. I, I would lean towards Arthur. He just looks more like the person who would kill. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm about... 60% sure. Let me guys know what your opinion here is. Paul or Arthur? Let me know in the comments. Okay, that's it for here. So now I think we need to lure out the elephant, right? So we need to extract the pheromones from the perfume. We need to take the foghorn and fabric for doll making at the dig site. 
So the foghorn is right here. It might fool an elephant. Okay, so how do I extract the pheromones from that perfume? Where is the perfume? There we go. Chemical analysis, there we go. Okay, so we got the pheromones. And we need to find the cloth from the dig site. So let's go back to the dig site. This, is this game is choppy sometimes, it really is. Stop shirking. Get dressed properly and come inside. All right. Okay, I have to admit the dressing up in this game is a little bit annoying. Stop, Lloyd. There is the cloth right here. This fabric will work. Mrs. Nini seemed to know her sewing inside out. Oh, I bet she missed us. I hope Miss Nini won't misunderstand me. Okay, so we have to go to Miss Nini's now. She's right by the police station, right? Can't go to the police station. I can't fast travel. Let's see if I can fast travel now. Yes, I can. Okay, let's change. Well, I'm going to leave the hat. I like the hat. That's the Sherlock hat. All right, let's go. He's even putting up posters. Hello. Oh, this is Miss Nini. So I probably need to take something, hunting Goliath. Let's pin this and talk to her. Good day, madam. I've come to you with a special requirement. The tailors on the street can't help me, I'm afraid. Could you make a doll for me? Oh, Senior Holmes. You taught the police how to do their job, and they found the thief. Of course I will help you. But what sort of doll? A child's doll, such as my great niece might play with? Um, a little larger than your typical doll. Signore, I don't understand. Boy, girl, animal, and what color? Animal, um, a passionate, perhaps amorous animal. Ah, oh, Signore, you talk in readers. I am an old lady who's seen it all. Tell me what you need. I need a life-size elephant. I think Mrs. Nini outdid herself with this one. Is that a tail? That's a trunk, John, but I must agree with you that it's a masterpiece. Well, let's not waste any time. Okay, so we need to go and try to get Goliath. Where do we go? So he went somewhere to the forest. So 
So I need to go to Gildan's yard to blow up the balloon. I guess we're gonna have a elephant balloon. And we're gonna try to go get Goliath to come and get some. So we can use the gas here, I guess. The game is on. So what's the plan? I hope it all doesn't go horribly wrong. We know that the elephant is seeking a female. We can arrange that. A doll with the appropriate scent might do miracles. So you're a marriage broker. Well, I suppose that makes me a groomsman. Oh, she is a bit breezy, I must say. Well, Goliath is eager for a single female elephant in his area. It should be just enough for his taste. You'll need to trust me. Are we ready? I can't stand the tension. We're ready. Let's call the elephant. Let's try this. How could anyone resist? How do I know what elephants like? Let's play teasing trumpet. Or submissive trumpet. Tempting. Let's play tempting trumpet. I knew a lady once who said just that. Impatient, maybe impatient. Too bad I'm not an elephant. Submissive? Take your time, Sherry. Impatient. Here I am. What were your other two wishes? That deserves a slap. And then a kiss. And here's our lovesick friend. So that worked. He got attracted to a balloon. I assure you that it is only a temporary measure. It won't be long until the elephant is gone, I promise you. Okay, so we found Goliath. I'm gonna go talk to her now. I want more information about my mother. I did what she wanted. I don't have any thoughts on this. Have you seen what your father sent to Paul? This is despicable. My father was never a gentleman, but this crosses the line. I knew that father wasn't fond of Paul, but this... This is just awful. If only he could have seen how good Paul he is to me. I've nothing to say about this. I've nothing to say about this. I've nothing to say about this. Are you aware that Paul smuggles drugs for a dangerous gang? Mr. Holmes, I've already told you. I call him a pirate in play. He's not an actual pirate. He's a champion and a brave gentleman, not a thug. Let us agree to disagree on that. But don't be surprised if one of his clients knocks on your door.
battering could have happened because of the darts, right? I don't feel safe with that beast back here. Why not? Okay, so we got the elephant, but she didn't tell us much. Where is the elephant? It's right here. With his friend. It injured itself while running through the forest. There's a dart. So somebody shot it with a dart. There's something in the needle. A feathered fletching. This might be promising. and compliant almost a gentleman so one of those guys shot him with a dart that's why he got pissed off gentle giant Let's see what else we got the left tusk is larger and more worn you're a left tusk elephant Left tusked elephant. I didn't know they were left or right tusked, but now we know. Oh wait, there's something else? No, I got all the evidence there. Actually, let's see. Mine, please. Nothing. Talk to her about the dart. It seems we have not collected all our evidence yet. The history of the Roman Empire to conspiracy theories of the French Revolution. Mother. It's nice to see her young and smiling. We've seen this. From before Mycroft was born. Our family loves. We have seen all this stuff. But apparently I'm missing something. I haven't seen this. His second child, an apparent son and heir, I'd say. Okay, so he was like a second child to him. So maybe his daughter was jealous, who knows? I don't feel safe with that beast back here. Okay, I'm gonna go talk to maybe Paul or Arthur about the dart. I'm gonna go talk to the Arthur about it. Go to the dig site. Stop, Lloyd. Okay, I hope Arthur tells me something about this now. Nothing to add. 
Your partner had a very specific attitude towards the things he treasured. Was this habitual for him? That would have been too much even for him. Don't get me wrong, he had a harsh temper. Like a true businessman, he was ready to burn his competitors to the ground. But threatening someone physically would have been something new even for him, am I correct? Absolutely. Besides, I had never seen him this angry. The fellow who received the letter must have been extremely alarmed. So the strict nine is the same, I guess, drug that Paul had, right? So I'm guessing Paul killed him. I think Paul, I think Paul killed him because we found that same drug in his place. Definitely the first one. He was definitely provoked. And let's see who did it. Arthur Swift? I think Paul did it actually. I think Paul did it. Change first. That was seem correct. Did it feel good killing Theodore Gildan after the humiliation and threats? What? I thought you were blaming Goliath for that. No, no, I think you killed Theodore Gildan. Goliath is, unfortunately, a victim of circumstance. I'm far better than to kill Gildan. Believe me. 
You see, I managed to capture the elephant. Goliath had a dart stuck in his hide, similar to the ones that you use to kill rodents. My guess is that you used Goliath. A dart can kill a mouse or human, but for an elephant, it's not enough. Strychnine is a powerful stimulant and convulsant. Once the drug was in the bloodstream, Goliath became extremely agitated and so blinded by the flow of energy that he killed his owner. And my dart is responsible for that. I'd rather use my hands. Yes, there would have been fewer variables, but after the attack on you, your condition didn't allow for a direct confrontation. So, you used what you had. That's not what happened. Anyone might have the same set of darts as I do. They're not expensive. But not everyone knew Theodore and had access to his property. I can understand why you killed Mr. Gildon. He saw you with his daughter. He checked up on you, yachtsman, smuggler, and a woman. He went so far as to hire some thugs to attack you. Theodore knew your weakness, your career. He forced you into a corner. You're a survivor. You were prepared for the worst, but Theodore surpassed even your worst-case scenario. So you responded accordingly. I've earned everything myself. Every victory, every trophy, every manga. I achieved all of it without murder. I don't need to kill in order to win. And you weren't afraid that he would reveal your secret to the owner of the Yacht Club or your competitors? I can control my fear. Trust me, I wouldn't have become a professional athlete otherwise. You were at the crime scene at the precise moment when Gildan died. I was not. I was visiting the doctor after the attack on me. Ah, of course, where no one saw you. That's an inconvenience. But in any case, the person who was there met the rage of the elephant. One was struck by the gate with such impact that they were thrown into the shed. The knife fell out. The bruises on your elbow match the contour of the hole in the shed. But I told you where my bruises came from. And I heard you, but you didn't catch my words. A bosun's knife was found there, a very specific tool commonly used in your field. That's only your assumption. I... I was never there. I mean, I was, but not when this happened. I'm gonna free Goliath, because Goliath is innocent in all, in all of this. I revealed many truths and lies concerning Gildan. One banal fact is that he was a bitter and angry man who acted according to his own desires and impulses. Such people are dangerous, they are unpredictable, and value their own comfort more than anything and anyone. The same as you, Paul. Are you out of your mind? You're a gambler, smuggler, and actor. You indulge your self-importance. Such egocentricity and impulsivity is frightening. I won't allow you to play with someone else's life. You are under arrest. Wait. At least tell Imogen. Tell her where I am. I think she deserves a space without you. I heard you can gamble on racing in prison, only it's rat racing. No yachts. Goodbye, Paul. Why did you pick my Paul? Out of all the people on this island. Just when I needed someone I could rely on. Believe me, I saved you. I found the true murderer. Would you really choose to live with the person who took your father's life? You took away the pillar I was relying on. Paul was my only hope. You've destroyed it. It was Paul who destroyed it, not me. I was merely the fact checker who discovered the real culprit. And now about that elephant. Oh yes, Goliath. You did nothing about it. I had to deal with it. Fortunately, there was a real man wanting to help me. He agreed to buy Goliath and relocate him to his property. I suppose I must congratulate you. I'd rather you leave. But first, here are my father's belongings. Some of them have information about your mother. Take them and leave me be. I appreciate it, Miss Gildan. I assure you, I only wanted to find the true perpetrator. Perhaps. Or perhaps you found a convenient scapegoat. Goodbye. I truly hope you meet more honest people in the future. Take care. All right, guys. So that was the Gilded Cage. We concluded the investigation. We arrested Paul. And right now, I'm having doubts if I made the right decision. Let me know what you guys think. It seems right to me, but I'm not so sure. He didn't admit it. Maybe it was Arthur. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.